This is Richard Francis Cottingham, an American serial killer and rapist who had reportedly murdered at least 18 young women and girls in New York and New Jersey between 1967 and 1980. Nicknamed the New York Ripper, the Torso Killer, and the Times Square Killer, his crimes often targeted prostitutes and included mutilation. Cottingham confirmed killings led to nine convictions and eight confessions under non-prosecution agreements, which led to him being given multiple life sentences in New Jersey prisons. Cottingham told a journalist in 2009 that he had committed at least 80 to 100, in his words, perfect murders of women in various regions of the United States, decades after his first five murder convictions. The four surviving abduction rape victims testified against Cottingham. He was convicted in three of the cases and acquitted in one. Cottingham, though, was almost caught red-handed while committing yet another crime. In the early hours of May 22, 1980, Cottingham picked up Leslie Ann O'Dell, who was asking for money on the corner of Lexington Avenue and 25th Street in Manhattan. She accepted the offer to have sex with him for money. Towards dawn, they checked into the same Hasbrook Heights Quality Inn where he had left Valerie Street's handcuffed body under a bed to be discovered by a housekeeper. Cottingham offered to give Odell a massage, and she rolled onto her stomach. While strapping her back, he pulled a knife and put it to her throat. He then snapped a pair of handcuffs on her wrist. He nearly bit off one of her nipples as he began torturing her. Odell's cries of pains were so loud that the motel staff, already uneased by the previous murders, called the police and then rushed to the room, demanding that Cottingham open the door. Cottingham was arrested by police officers as they approached the hallway. When he was arrested, he had handcuffs, a leather gag, two slave collars, a switchblade knife, replica pistols, and a stash of prescription pills. The charges listed in Cottingham's New Jersey indictment included kidnapping, attempted murder, aggravated assault, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, aggravated sexual assault while armed, aggravated sexual assault while armed, sodomy, aggravated sexual assault while armed, Delasho, possession of a weapon, switchblade knife, and possession of controlled substances. Police stated in April 1978, after his wife started divorce proceedings, he kept a lock room in the basement apartment of the house where they lived in Lodi, New Jersey. Following his 1980 arrest, police found in the lock room and in the trunk of his car personal effects which they traced to several of his victims. This is Joel David Rifkin, an American serial killer who was sentenced to 203 years in prison for the murders of nine women between 1989 and 1993, although it's believed he had up to 17 victims. On February 20, 1989, Rifkin committed his first murder, killing Heidi Balch in his home in East Meadow. He then dismembered her body, removing her teeth and fingertips and putting her head in a paint can, which he left in the woods on a golf course in Hopewell, New Jersey. He dumped her remaining torso and arms into the East River around New York City after disposing of her legs further north. The severed head of Balch was discovered on the seventh hole of the golf course on March 5, 1989. The legs of Balch were found on April 8, 1989 in Peconock Creek near Jefferson Township, New Jersey. Her remains were not completely discovered until 2013. It's thought that Rifkin would kill 16 more women over the next four years. He was arrested in 1993 and implicated in Balch's murder. In 2013, investigators found that Balch and the woman he said was his first victim were the same person. How he was caught, though, is a story of its own. Tiffany Bresciani was a sex worker who was working on Allen Street in Manhattan when Rifkin picked her up on June 24, 1993. Tiffany was with her boyfriend, David Rubenstein, a punk rock musician. Rifkin informed Rubenstein that she would return within 20 minutes. After Tiffany failed to return, Rubenstein contacted the police with a description of the 1984 Mazda pickup truck that Rifkin drove. State troopers patrolling Long Island Southern State Parkway noticed a pickup truck without a license plate on June 28, 1993. They found Bresciani's body under a tarpaulin after pulling Rifkin over. Rifkin was literally caught red-handed. He was found guilty of nine counts of second-degree murder in 1994 and sentenced to 203 years up to life in prison. This is Marek Heko, a chef by profession, who was sentenced to 26 years in prison for murder after he was caught on a body camera video stumbling back to the scene of a fatal stabbing that he had committed and telling a police officer, quote, 
No, I know what happened. Originating from Kemsford, Essex, 26 years old Marek Heko was found guilty of murder for stabbing to death his romantic rival, 44 year old Adrian Ellingford, who was in bed with the defendant's ex girlfriend. The victim, Ellingford, a married father of two, was stabbed twice in the back at a home in Nelson Grove on July 25, 2022. Just a couple of hours later, a body camera worn by a police officer guarding the crime scene recorded a visibly intoxicated Hecko coming over while taking swigs from a half-empty bottle of brandy. In the video, the police officer asks Hecko to state his name, which he refuses to do. He bragged, quote, Because I know what happened. I needed me to know, figure it out what happened. If you don't have me, you don't know what happened. When the officer asks him to elaborate, Hecko replies saying he knew that the victim came here while also abusing the victim. The cop presses him further and Hecko continues to insist that he knows what happens before slurring, quote, You're gonna think about me, but it's not gonna be me because there's no proof. Tell me what happened. This city is mine. The recording ends with Hecko being arrested as officers struggle to put the muscle-bound suspect in a police van. He was identified as the main suspect in the killing of Ellingford while he was in custody. Prosecutors said that Hecko had been in a relationship with Stephanie Bream for seven months before they broke up in May because she did not approve of his drug use. However, the man continued to be obsessed. Bream later started dating Ellingford, who was married and had two sons, ages 10 and 12. On the night of the murder, Ellingford was staying at Bream's house when he woke up and said that someone was in the house. Shortly afterward, he collapsed to the bedroom floor with a knife lodged in his back. He was pronounced dead at the scene, suffering from two stab wounds. Prosecutors told Kelmsford Crown Court that Hecko broke into Bream's home while she was sleeping with Ellington. The attacker took a knife from the kitchen and stabbed Ellingford with such force that the blade struck a bone in the victim's chest, and the handle broke off. According to prosecutors, in the lead-up to the killing, the jilted boyfriend had been stalking his ex-girlfriend by showing up at her work and home uninvited and sending her messages and videos. Judges Christopher Morgan said Hecko was jealous and suspicious of her. At Hecko's sentencing, Ellingsford's widow, Laura, delivered a lengthy impact victim statement, describing her late husband of 17 years as a truly brilliant father whose death has devastated the family. The woman said in a statement that he was brutally ripped from their lives in events that she still can't really comprehend or begin to explain to his sons. The impact of his death had affected many people in very different ways. It was truly heartbreaking. The jury found the defendant guilty in less than a day. Heck, who reportedly looked emotionless in court, was sentenced to at least 26 years in prison with a credit of 230 days served. This is Luca Rocco Magnata, a convicted Canadian murderer. He was convicted of murdering and dismembering Jun Lin, as well as mailing his severed limbs to different political parties and elementary schools. Lin was an international student from China. Magnata has had schizophrenia since 2000. In 2005, he was convicted of fraud in Toronto and sentenced to community service and probation, respectively. After an 11-minute video titled One Lunatic One Ice Pick was uploaded to bestgore.com, which allegedly showed the murder online, Magnata fled Canada and was the subject of an Interpol red notice, which led to an international manhunt. Magnata was arrested after he was discovered in an internet cafe in Berlin while he was reading news about himself. Before he admitted who he was, he tried to give the police fake names. He was flown back to Canada on a Royal Canadian Air Force CC-150 Polaris after being handed over to Canadian authorities in Berlin. Magnata was confined to solitary confinement at the Rivière des Prairies Detention Center on May 29, 2012 at 11 a.m. A package containing a left foot was delivered to the headquarters of the Conservative Party of Canada. Another package containing a left hand was addressed to the Liberal Party, but was intercepted at a Canada Post Processing Facility. A janitor found a suitcase with a decomposing torso. It was left in a garbage pile in the alley behind an apartment building in the Snowden area of Montreal. On June 5, 2012, a package which contained a right foot was delivered to St. George's School, and another package which contained a right hand was delivered to False Creek Elementary School in Vancouver. June's family arrived at Trudeau Airport in Montreal in June 6 of 2012. Afterward, a candlelit vigil was held in Montreal. The body parts were later marched to Lin June by DNA samples from his family. 
After receiving an anonymous tip, police recovered Lin Jun's head, which was lying on the edge of a small lake in Montreal's Agrinon Park. The ashes of Lin were buried in the Notre Dame de Ney Cemetery in Montreal after his body was cremated on July 11. Magnata was named the Canadian Newsmaker of the Year by the Canadian media, which caused a stir. After committing the case to trial, the preliminary inquiry judge set a tentative trial date of September 8, 2014. Magnata admitted to killing Jun Lin in court in Quebec on September 29, 2014. He pleaded not guilty to murder because of his schizophrenia. The disorder has been diagnosed as borderline personality disorder and histrionic personality disorder. On December 15, 2014, the jury received their final instructions after a 12-week trial. On their eighth day of the jury's deliberation, they returned with a verdict of guilty on all charges. Magnata is now serving a life sentence and he will be eligible for parole in 25 years. Magnata was also sentenced to 19 years for other charges.